As you know, we are in the business of finding people their dream homes. And wouldn't it be lovely to help out these cuties find their own dream home too? Our puppy play date for our sales meeting was facilitated by the extraordinary volunteers at Muddy Paws Second Chance Rescue. Muddy Paws is a local non-for-profit, all-volunteer organization operated in Omaha and Council Bluffs. For more information on how you can adopt, foster, or volunteer your time, please visit their website, www.muddy.pawssecondchancerescue.com or call 402-515-2570. And hopefully you get to take home a puppy too. Hi, and welcome to April's sales meeting. As you can see, we have a lot of wonderful little co-hosts with me. So I hope you guys enjoy all of the little shenanigans that we have going. But also, you know how I do. I always have some housekeeping items for you. We have some informative things. And also uh, we'll hear from Tom, Tim, and Kelly, and all sorts of people for your April sales meeting. Uh, first, I just wanted to remind everyone that we are in peak busy season. You guys are killing it, which we absolutely love. But we do have a few things that we just want to remind you about. So be sure to submit your loops for review so that way we can have all the information ready to pay you promptly. The other thing is, is make sure that you submit your orders to Green Title if you're using them. So submit them directly through Dot Loop. Also, we want to make sure that all of our paperwork is complete and that another little tidbit is that it is peak season, like we said, and Alex and Eden are working really hard to process all the commissions as soon as they come in. However, if you're not getting a commission or it's been a few extra days than normal, that is usual for this time of year because other companies are busy too. So they don't necessarily always do um, have the checks in hand, but when they do, they're going to process it. So we try to do our best to do it as soon as possible for you. We do have the Shred event coming up. So in May, the first weekend, first weekend of May and the second weekend of May. So May 1st and 8th, we do have Shred events at multiple locations. So each location will have a revolving Shred It truck. And we do have that information uh, within the emails and we will send that out in the brokerage news and keep you posted as we get there. So the only location that we're not doing is Dundee. That location will be held at the Indian Hills uh, office there. <laughs> Hello, guys. <laughs> I know. Okay. All right. Just a reminder that puppies like to play. <laughs> okay. Just a reminder that since it is peak season, the offices are getting busier as well. So we have listing appointments, we have buyer appointments, we have closings, we have all sorts of activity happening. So be sure to reserve your conference rooms and make sure you wipe everything down. So we also have a lot more people utilizing the copiers because we're doing newsletters and you guys are just killing it in general. So just be sure to also reserve your copier space. So we would always, we always hate to see it when two people are trying to come in and work at once or when you have a busy office full and people are always kind of interrupting that work. So consider the times that you're coming in, sometimes after hours or weekends is going to be better. Um, but do make sure that you do reserve it. Now, if you're on our at Better Omaha emails, you can reserve that straight through your calendar. So all you do is create an event for your copy job, put the timeframes that you're looking for. And then on the right hand side, you're going to select rooms. Underneath the rooms, you're going to find your office and that copier will be there or your conference room. So it's, an, it's a really easy way to, to schedule those pieces. We'll also send out instructions on how to schedule if you're not using the at Better Omaha email. It's easy, it just takes a couple of other steps to set up, but once you have it set up, it's really easy to kind of move along and schedule as you need. Hey everybody. Um, these really are just absolutely precious little guys. I would love to take one home, but they're gonna get big, aren't they? Um, well, I only have a few things to talk about today. Uh, one, uh, we are wrapping up our first 100 Days to Greatness class of the year. It's gonna be coming to end in just the next few weeks, and we're gonna start a whole new one starting May 10th. So it's a new round for 100 Days to Greatness. We pretty much know what new agents need to sign up for that, and I'll be calling most of you. Uh, but if I miss you, um, please uh, just call me directly and let me know, because we want you to be in that course. It's just fantastic. Then, agents mentoring agents, as you know, that's a cycle. What we do is we do a series, and it, it kind of goes alongside of the 100 Days to Greatness class. And our goal is to finish this series up um, in the next few weeks, and then starting May 12th, we're gonna be starting a whole new cycle of the agents mentoring agents. And remember that class is, um, it's, oh. even though it's geared towards mentees, uh, we have mentors that chime in as well, but we, it's open to the entire company. 
So on Mondays, when you see the sales meeting notes and it says, or the sale, or the Monday email that tells you what's coming up that week, make sure you look to see what the what we're talking about at Agents Mentoring Agents because that's actually um, open to everybody and there's a lot of content you might really like. And the last thing I have to say is our float. Um, so for some of you that may remember pre-COVID, we used to take, go to parades and have fun. And as that stuff eventually opens up, we do have a float and it is now parked in a secure storage unit here in Omaha. So um, as these things to start to open up and we start um, uh, doing things again, uh, the float is ready to be used. So anyway, that's it. And I'm going to put the puppy down and we'll see you all later. All right, everybody. Well, this may be the cutest sales meeting we have ever had. And look at all these adorable puppies. And I have three little helpers with me who's going to assist in announcing the mail money recipients this month. So if I can have my first little helper, can you bring me the first name of the mail money recipient? Thank you. And what's your name? Taylor. Tell the camera. What's your name? Taylor. All right, Taylor what? Taylor Grace Lamontane. Taylor Grace Lamontane. And who do you belong to? Yeah. Me. Okay, yeah, this is my daughter Taylor. She's one of the helpers today. And she gave me the name of the first mail money recipient who is Angela May, who earned $976.50 for closing on her outgoing referral. Congra congratulations to Angela. And can I have my second helper? Have my second helper. Come up here, buddy. Thank you. All right. And what's your name? What's your name? Tell everybody what your name is. Do you remember? <laughs> You're shy, you're not gonna say? Hello. All right, well this is Caden, by the way. This is my son, he's helping out today too. And our second mail money recipient is Mary Jane Zeller. She earned a check for $1,400.81. So congratulations to Mary Jane. And we have a third one, if she's gonna bring it to me, we have a third little helper over here. No. No, she said no. What's your name? Yeah. Is it Seal? C C O. C C? No, over it. Nope, over it. Okay, well she's not gonna tell me her name either. But she brought me Amber Barr, who earned a check for two thousand two hundred fifty-eight dollars and sixteen cents on her outgoing referral. So congratulations to all the mail money recipients. And if you would like to earn some outgoing referral money, simply submit your outgoing referrals to www.referbettereveryday.com. Thank you. Hi everyone. I have another one cute little pup here. This is so fun. Um, so this month we have a few new agents uh, that we would like to welcome. We have Ann Fuller who joined the Copper Group and she is a Lincoln agent. So if you have any needs in Lincoln, you can email her um, and she can help you out. So, and then we also have two brand new agents. Um, Lindsay Kroon, who is out of the Lakeside office, and she's a brand new agent, so congratulations and welcome. And we have Jackie Berry, who is also out of the uh, Lakeside office, so welcome to Jackie and all of our newest good lifers. Uh, if you need anything, please reach out and let me know. Um, we, the um, social media templates that we made, you may have seen for April, we sent a bunch of them out. One of them was for National Pet Day, and I believe it's National Pet Month, so you could you could use that and then we are going to be making a lot of those templates for upcoming months so we'll have some for you to use in may and if you ever have any special um, suggestions for ones you would like to see just let us know but we're going to try to hit those fun national holidays and just kind of quirky holidays too so um we also have another newsletter coming out soon and uh you saw the email probably about the new note cards so we have six new note card packets um, of different designs. So you can order those and use those. And they're only $13.50 a pack for 20. So try to make those more affordable for everyone and hope that um, those are good. And if you ever have suggestions, just let me know. Thanks. Hey everybody, it's Alana with Dundee. Just wanted to do a quick shout out and say happy spring. Um, it's finally here, I think, maybe. So wanted to make sure that, uh, let everybody know that 
What we're seeing out in the field is that appraisers are getting things done faster. So they're kind of getting back into the groove of what they're doing. Rates we all know have toggled up. Um, not much we can do to stop that train, but they're still very strong, very good. And um, we're also seeing some of the products that investors had stopped offering uh, when the whole pandemic started, we've seen those start to resurface. Um, they look a little different, but for the most part, at least we have some more tools that are coming back into our toolbox to use. Um, so if you have lending partners that have told you, hey, we don't have this, we don't have that, maybe start checking with them because some of their investors may be uh, bringing those back online. Um, <clears throat> we are seeing a big slowdown on the refis because the rates have toggled up a little bit, but it's still busy and we're still here to help. Um, thank you to all of you that have been sending me and Nikki, uh, your family, your friends, your previous clients to uh, help get them into a better position with their payment. Uh, no sense paying more if you don't have to. Uh, we are also seeing some very creative uh, offers that are being accepted and coming through. If you have a question on whether or not something can be done and that it, it, it can get through underwriting and, and those kinds of things, just ask us. We'll give you our uh, information that we have at hand. Uh, so please keep in mind that Nick and I are here to help you however we can. Uh, we want to be a good resource for you. I think things are going to continue to be busy um, and we're here to try to find a way to help get our clients uh, offers accepted. So call anytime, text me, call me, email me, my cell phone 402-618-6454. And we hope you have an awesome beginning to the year and uh, look forward to the great weather. Thanks so much and have a great day. Okay, how about I rub your belly? Okay, you're okay. Nobody's going to hurt you. I promise you, nobody's going to hurt you. Okay, are we ready? Ready. Okay. Well, I'm here with Tommy from Muddy Paws Adoption. And I walked in today uh, knowing that I like dogs, but not knowing that I would like it quite as much as I like this one. These dogs are about the cutest thing I've ever seen. They're just absolutely adorable. And this little guy was shaking, but I think he's calmed down now. But I'll tell you, um, I think everybody ought to have one, maybe two, because they're really cute. But, uh, hey, so Leslie asked me real quick to talk to you guys about, uh, you know, kind of the home inspection environment. We're going to do some ATAs on, uh, or excuse me, we're going to do an ATA Thursday, which will air before uh, you guys will see this, which we're going to talk a lot more about the seller, escalation clauses, how to negotiate offers, how to present offer, present pro or properties to the market and um, protect ourselves uh, and protect our sellers. But today, very briefly, I wanted to talk about um, inspections and the importance of inspections. Uh, I had the good fortune of being at the, uh, on the panel from the Women's Council of Realtors last month. And one of the conversations that was very poignant was about inspections and, and the lack thereof in the market today because of current market environments. And people are telling me now, or, and I'm experiencing it through some of the opportunities to, to see things that I've, that I've just encountered on my own, that now even pre-inspections are becoming falling out of favor because sellers just don't think they're going to have to entertain anything and they don't want to have actual knowledge of any uh, material defects. And so just to kind of, there's not a right or wrong answer and every situation is different, but to add a little bit of color to these things and perspective, I would say that you want to be very sensitive to the fact that the seller can have some, some increased exposure as a result of there not being any inspection because it begs the question on certain things as it relates to roofs leaking or basement water intrusion or electrical deficiencies or plumbing deficiencies probably are the four common, most common uh, concerns where we have disputes as to whether or not the seller had actual knowledge of a potential material defect. And by not having any inspection whatsoever, whether that be a pre-inspection or an inspection by the buyer, we have seen increased levels of, of liability in the sense that buyers, after the fact, after they've entered these homes and they 
and they've endured some of the problems, we are seeing an increased amount of potential litigation or at least conflict as it relates to uh, purchasers in these homes because of the lack of inspections. And pre-inspections, as I mentioned just previously, have kind of gone out of vogue too because of the expense for one, um, not needing them or the seller not thinking they needed them or the listing agent not thinking they needed them. And then any potential materiality of those findings. But I think we need to remember that once we have a pre-inspection, we're not obligated to fix every single item on the pre-inspection. Of course, we are obligated to disclose it and make it, make it available to the buyer. And in many instances, buyers are happy to accept those liabilities. And, and in many instances, it's protecting the seller because they don't have the exposure of, of maybe needing to know something or, or needing to communicate something that they didn't communicate. So we just want to be sensitive to the fact that, uh, you know, that we're not necessarily ridding sellers of all their responsibility. Certainly anything that's a material defect is disclosable. And we need to keep reminding ourselves that that disclosability is not at the discretion of the seller, that we are obligated to disclose those as a result of our licensure. And so we want to be very, very cognizant of that. The other thing is, is that we're seeing increased agitation of buyers as it relates to them after the fact, you know, having a bit of revisionist history from the standpoint of what they remember when they were actually writing the offer. And so with that said, we need to remember that uh, protect yourself with a home inspection, that document. We want to get that signed uh, by the buyer that they acknowledge that they're waiving their home inspection because we don't want people to have that revisionist history and go back to us and say, well, gosh, six months later, if I would have known that we were going to have this problem or that problem or another problem, I would have engaged uh, a home inspector because I've signed up for more than I can, than I can stomach from the standpoint of, of material defects of the home or repairs that are necessary and what have you. So I just, it's important. And I understand people say, well, you got to live in the real world, Tom. We can't get an offer accepted in this $250,000 price range unless we forego the inspection. All I'm saying is that there's not a right or wrong answer, but there is a correct process. And the, and the correct process is to try to from the list side is to try to be as transparent as possible because it's a lot easier up front to mitigate any concerns from the standpoint of the risk that the that the uh, buyer isn't taking on. You're going to find a buyer that will take on more than uh, than maybe we would ever have considered in another market. But if we if we somehow can be thought or somehow can be construed that we have been misleading or or disingenuous that can be a real problem from the standpoint of liability. So transparency is always the best answer. Doing the right thing in business, like I've always said, is, is always good business. So just be thinking about documentation, always documenting each and every situation as it relates to the uh, any material defects. And, and, and you have to have the courage to stand up to your seller in the, in the instance of, of being a listing agent and say to them, hey, I know that this is a problem and I have to disclose it to the to the other party, meaning the buyer and the buyer's agent, because I'm obligated to by law. And we've had a couple instances this year where people have not wanted to do that. And when we've had agents that have the courage to walk away from those particular listings, one was a sewer, uh, uh, was a sewer line. And actually, I'm going to call this person out for, for being courageous because they walked away from a real easy commission because they knew it was the wrong thing. And that was Joni Sturek. And she flat out said, hey, I'm not doing this because it's not right. And I, I'm not going to list this house because I will have to disclose this, this material defect. And she walked away from it. And another agent, another brokerage, of course, took it on. And we communicated with them that, you know, that these were the findings if they weren't aware of it, just because we want buyers to be protected. But it just, you know, doing the right thing, even though in the near term it hurts to lose a commission, is always the right business decision long term. And even more importantly, we've got to be able to lay our head on the pillow and, and know that we've done the right thing each and every day. So Tommy and I are going to sign off here because he, I think he needs to take a nap because he's pretty tired. But uh, but it was good to talk to you all. I'm going to uh, we'll have talked about a lot of other stuff relating to uh, this crazy market we're in uh, at the ATA. And then there's also going to be a video going out on something else. But there's kind of a try try out of stuff here. But I just wanted to focus specifically on the inspections today. Thank you to Matt Bills. So 
thanks so much to all our staff and everybody that gets this organized and uh and to Matt and Kim for our little studio down here. Um, I'm signing off from 4949 Underwood in, uh, in this basement. I don't think I'm going to get any acting jobs out of the deal, but it's uh, okay, guys. Take care. Hope you're having a great Tuesday. Well, that concludes our April sales meetings. Thank you guys for joining us, all of us. And we'll have a little bit more information for you about these wonderful puppies, too. Tuesday sales meeting day. <laughs> so for those of you guys who don't know, it is Tom's 50th birthday today. So we're doing uh, a couple of special things that um, we won't, we won't embarrass him too much, except for when the stories come around. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to wait to let Tom in. So when we tell you, we want everybody to unmute. And when we let him in, we all just want to say happy birthday. I would suggest singing, but I don't necessarily know if we all want to be singing all at once on Zoom. And then you guys can see on the screen is Kahoot. So if you have not played Kahoot before, which I think the majority of you have, but if you have not played Kahoot before, you want to download the app and then have that number ready. So we're going to play Kahoot towards the end, but just so that you have it downloaded and ready to go, um, before we actually start. So, yeah. And everybody's so, it's always so quiet, which is so exciting. I think a few of you guys have heard me talk about this, but we're going to talk about it a little bit more on the actual recorded version of sales meeting. But in May, we are doing an actual in person sales meeting for the first time since February of 2020. So, this is I can't even tell you guys how excited I am just actually getting and to see you guys at the brunch with your brokers has been phenomenal. I love it. So excited. And, but that we have to have, you know, smaller groups of people and whatnot. So, um, what I'm really excited for too, sorry, is, um, it'll be outside. So we'll have all sorts of things happening. So we might have recorded version, we might have some extra fun special stuff, but um, we get to be in person. It'll be outdoors, most likely at the Lakeside parking lot, but we're working on more details for that too. So you'll be hearing about that coming up in the next few weeks, but very excited about it. All right. It's hard because we can't see each other's faces. I know, right? So yeah. maybe we um, unshare the Kahoot. It, yeah. Does everybody, could everybody I could stop the chat? sharing. We can put the pin in the chat. Perfect. There we go. Just for a little bit. That way we can see each other for just a little bit. All right. There we are. All right. Do we have, we have the Kahoot. I put it up there. Perfect. Well, naturally in true Tom fashion, he's late, which is pretty much what we would expect. And that's why I was pretty glad, I was pretty confident that we wouldn't have to necessarily keep him in the waiting room of Zoom for very long. So before he gets on though, I wanna just do, um, I have a quick few things to talk about today that I didn't talk about on the recorded sales meeting because you guys will see, and you might've seen the picture that we had puppies at our sales meeting. So it was a little distracting. So I didn't get to talk uh, about everything that I was planning on talking about. One, because it was distracting, but two, I was like, at any point in time, one of these puppies is going to potty somewhere and we're gonna have to all wrangle them up and get them back into the van. So we were kind of hustling through. But one thing I wanted to talk about, we had our Nebraska audit. And so it's the same thing, you guys. We got to get those agencies in on time. We've got to get our net sheets and cost sheets in on time. Um, but what we've been seeing a little bit more frequently is um, missing net and cost sheets. 
And so basically the requirements are that on the buy side, you have to have a net sheet for each written price change. Technically each price change or negotiation should be in writing. However, we know that there is verbal negotiations that go back and forth. So from an audit perspective, we do have to have an actual signed net sheet for every time we have um, a different price piece. Now that also includes if the price changes somewhere down the line. So if you have to do an adjustment for the purchase price with an addendum, then you have to have another net sheet as well. Now on the seller side, it's a little bit different, but you guys will, will see that we require it. We push it and require that you have those, I'm sorry, I was saying net sheets for buyers. It's cost sheets, I'm, I'm back talking. Um, cost sheets for buyers, net sheets for sellers. Now we encourage net sheets for your sellers at every price change as well, just so that you don't have to remember which one you need and which one you don't need. So then that way um, you're not always thinking, well, wait, is it the buy side that I don't need another sheet when I change the price? We just ask for it every single time. But when it comes to the sellers, you need a net sheet at listing and then you need a final net sheet. So whatever that price is, and you don't have to do um, a net sheet for each price change that you do, but you have to have them listing, offer, and uh, final, essentially, if your offer is your final. Any questions on cost and net sheets other than when I said it backwards? All right, and is Tom on yet? Oh, Tom, I guess it's his birthday. We'll give him a free pass, right? He's probably oh, yeah. anticipating that we're going to do something for him. So he's probably. She's, he's right there. She's ready to let him in. I'm going to admit him. Are Wait, we ready? We got to, everybody, we need to either unmute all. Can we unmute everybody? Show your screen if you can. Your chaos. <laughs> all right. It's, it might be a little, a little loud here, but as soon as we let him on. And we'll all just say happy birthday and do jazz. Do all right. jazz. Yes. Okay. 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 All right, here I go. Happy birthday, Tom. Happy birthday. 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 <laughs> Welcome to the 5 0 Club. <laughs> hey. He's on, he's muted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very nice of you guys. Thanks so much. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thank you. Well, Tom, we'll try not to embarrass you too much today, but you know that we couldn't let your birthday pass, especially on sales meeting day, without telling you happy birthday. Now, luckily for you and for everyone else, I'm not going to sing and nobody else is going to sing happy birthday. So you've got that going for you. That's a gift in and of itself. Right? We try to aim to please. We aim to please. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Well, well so you. everybody's got the Kahoot pin and ID. So just make sure for those of you that have joined here recently, make sure that you have Kahoot downloaded and ready on your phone. Um, we'll be doing it a little bit later here. Mm -hmm. I'm not probably in 20 minutes or so, maybe 15, 20 minutes. We have a few things to talk about. Like I mentioned that uh, we didn't say in the actual recorded sales meeting. So I'll hit on a couple of those things and then we'll jump into it. So one thing I wanted to remind everybody about too, though, is that the mask mandate in the Omaha area is still in effect. And so even though some of those other counties and states don't necessarily have it, we still are encouraging them in those locations. And also to just be mindful that it is still in place until um, I think May 23rd for Omaha area. So when you're coming into the office, especially when you're meeting clients, and when you're even just kind of walking around to grab you know, something off a copier, please be sure to wear your mask because it still is in effect. And we want to be, we want to really just be uh, respectful of those people that either are coming into the office, their, their clients, and also if they haven't been vaccinated yet or not. So we still want to make sure that that comfort level is there for everyone. And so also, I mean, good news is, is that um, vaccines are out and pretty much available. So anybody can kind of grab on, you know, people are going to be a lot and stopping in. So um, yeah. 
So that's good there. And then uh, Tim, you wanted to talk a little bit about the next class that's coming up for 100 Days to Greatness. Oh, yeah. Um, so Carol and I are very happy and proud to be wrapping up uh, the first 100, day, 100 Days to Greatness. Um, I think this week or next week is going to be the last one. But um, we're excited because we have a new class starting uh, May 10th. Uh, we've talked about that. But for the first time ever, we are going to do an evening class. So Mondays at 7 p.m. for the brand new agents that have not taken 100 Days to Greatness. We find it might be a little calmer in the evening. I'll be able to attend in the evening. Um, we're looking forward to it. We have a lot of new agents that are uh, school teachers or transitioning from full-time jobs. And so this is really gonna help them. So um, Mondays, 7 p.m. And then um, I pretty much have reached out to most of the new agents that should be taking it. If you feel like you haven't or you'd like to take it, just reach out to Carol or I directly. And then in the upcoming pre-recorded sales meeting, I did talk more about it, um, but I just am now announcing that it's gonna be a Monday night class. So that's it. Tim, I will send it out. Um, I'll send out the invite, but know that Tim is gonna be the one that signs you up. So don't worry about signing up from there or any of the, the incidentals right. around the fees, um, but it will actually give you a little video and show you what you're, what you're gonna be committing to for 14 weeks. So, um, and then concurrently, we will start our new series of mentor-mentee meetings that will coincide that same week, only different days this time, hallelujah, um, we'll start on May 10th and that'll be another 14 week cycle, so. Perfect. Thank you very much. Awesome. awesome. And then one thing I wanted to mention too is that the newsletter is coming out today. So you'll have a new newsletter template that will be out. Uh, we also, if you need to blast email that, uh, we have a very quick and easy way to do that through Zap. So I might do a video or if you, um, you know, want to sit down and just walk through how to do that, I'm happy to show you that. So there are two templates to it. You have the template that's printed out version. And then um, I think new last month was the template for blast emailing it through email. So we have a couple of options and authors worked really hard and created a really cool, um, easy to edit newsletter template. So take advantage of that if you are not already. Um, one other thing that I wanted to talk about that kind of is in relation to the audit, but I think is becoming a little bit more relevant um, is those FISBO sellers. And so just want to talk really quickly about what's required when you're working with a FISBO. So there's a couple of things that tend to happen. Either we continue to represent the buyer and our for sale by owner is a client customer. So you have to make sure that you have agency agreements still in that regard, because otherwise, um, when it comes to audit time, then you'll get a call from me asking where that's at. Then if there's another scenario where you decide to become a dual agent, so then you represent both sides of it. Now, in that case, you're going to have a lot more paperwork. So, for example, if you're representing the buyer, you'll have your agency agreement that says that you're their buyer. Then once you have um, determined that you're going to be dual agency, your buyer then needs an agency that's marked dual and the seller needs an agency that's marked dual. And then you also need the dual agency agreement. So that one has gotten missed a couple of times or it's been in place in lieu of one of the agencies. So you do need both agency with dual and agency uh, dual agency agreement. So just keep that in mind. Now, the other piece of it too, is that if you would like credit on the buy side for a for sale by owner, in the past with the way that the MLS has operated, uh, we've not been able to add an unrepresented client into the MLS as the buy side, we had to represent them with a listing agreement. They have changed that over the last couple of years. And so I think a lot of people are still kind of in that habit of, well, if I want credit, then I have to have a listing agreement and become a dual agent. But it, it eliminates a lot of the liability too, because then you're, you're specifically representing the buyer, yet you're also able to get the credit for the volume and, and the sale of that in the MLS. And also um, another reason that it's great to put those FISBOs in the MLS is that when it comes time for you to do a CMA or anyone really, you, it's always nice to have those houses to be able to reference um, in one spot versus having to, to pop around some of those, um, you know, assessor site or, uh, you know, RPR and, 
and um, the prospecting tool within the MLS. So I just wanted to kind of point that out. If you do need that to post into the MLS, all you have to do is just, um, you fill out a lip sheet with the bare minimum required information. So you do have to know some of the details about the actual house. So take it, you know, keep that in mind that you might have to ask or um, already just be aware of what it is. And then you just submit it with your paperwork. You don't have to create a new loop, just submit it and uh, send a little message that says, um, you know, by side represented FISBO, please input into the MLS. So that's it. Any questions on FISBO paperwork or dual agency paperwork? I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for those of us who put it into the MLS ourselves, how do we list that FISBO listing? Yes, good question. So um, I might have Justine pop in if I say this incorrectly, but you have to do it at closing or, or Cassie, is it at closing or pending? I'm only looking at you, Cassie, and see you. Or Justine, whoever wants to follow. Um, are you talking about like the comp compensation agreement? Right. So, so yeah, um, um, so it has to be it has to be entered in within seven days of closing. And it can't be entered in prior to closing, correct? Right. Okay. Yes. So you have to put it in closed, and then did it. Justine, does, it, does that box pop up when you're entering it closed or does it pop up after you've saved it as closed? Um, as you're entering it. Okay, perfect. Unless they just, it. But I believe it's as you're entering it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you just select compensation agreement and that will yep. take care of the listing agent portion that we normally have to fill in as required. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Awesome. All right. Any of um, anything else, or does anybody want to add anything um, from our side of things? If not, we can get to the fun stuff and play Kahoot. All right. I think we're ready. I think we're ready to play Kahoot. What do oh, you think? Wait. I have one question. Yep. Um, Okay, so this is related to, I had a situation this weekend and I've never came across this, but is it legal for a seller's agent to stipulate what lender your client must get pre-approved through? A must, I would say no, because it's always your client's um, preference. But I would also say that in a seller's market, it might be the difference of getting it or not getting it. So. I'll let Tom, you know, chime in on this one too, but it's kind of similar to title and, um, you know, anything else that, that people are trying to work through is my thought. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. It's, they, they can't force your buyer to utilize a certain lender by, you know, by contract law, they couldn't necessarily force them to do that but they could certainly reject your offer uh, and, and have that be a consideration to reject your offer. Yeah, so pragmatically speaking, in a market like this, boy, who would have ever thought that we would get in a market where sellers could dictate who the freaking lender was? That's yeah. a new one. But, uh, but uh, yeah, they, they, uh, they certainly could reject your offer um, in the event that they wanted to pursue something else. Uh, I don't know that I would have necessarily put that in writing because there could be a, re a workaround from a legal implication standpoint from uh, unfair business practices or, um, you know, antitrust or some other things that could, could, could uh, rear its head from that. But um, at the end of the day, they could simply reject the offer. This was just one of like probably 20 different stipulations they had. And it was like a hang up for my buyer because she'd already been pre-approved through someone. Um, so I was just wondering, I didn't think it was legal, but I get Very it. obscure, very yeah. obscure. So, so they wanted one particular lender, not just, not yeah. the lender that you had. Correct. And then they had the lender at the open house with them. So, um, so, so, okay. I'm going to change my, I'm going to color this a little differently then. 
<clears throat> I think that is very possibly a RESPA violation because you're steering business based on probably some relationship. So there's probably some inducement that they're receiving or some relationship there. And so uh, at a minimum, if they didn't disclose that there's a relationship there in some sort of affiliated business agreement, then there would be a RESPA violation. So it and would- Tom, she's talking, yeah. the person she's talking about does this frequently. And then he also pays out at a higher rate, which he states yeah. in there. He also wants you to use his title company arrangement. And so all of this is always in his associated documents without other information. So is this our friend that we've talked about it? In yes. Frequent? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think those are RESPA violations. And I was bored. I, I didn't even know how to, we ultimately decided not to make an offer because of this. Yeah. I, I, I think that they're ultimately are RESPA, that they're RESPA. I'm going to make a, um, and I, this is important. So I think it's good to have this dialogue. Um, if people will endure us all, Sorry. uh, I think at the end of the day, it is one thing for them to reject your offer as it relates specifically to an experience they maybe had with a vendor. So I think the seller could say, Hey, I'm not going to take that offer. I have no confidence in that entity that's lending the money. And, you know, whatever. That's, that is one thing. Okay. Um, it is wholly different. And I think the distinction is this it is wholly different to suggest that you and mandate that you have to use a lender. Um, and, and I don't think that uh, I, I think that's, I think plain and simply uh, that's a RESPA violation, period, period, period. I don't think there's, I don't even think it's debatable in my opinion. So Aubrey, I do think uh, Aubrey just put exactly what the guy was saying here in the chat. So um, why don't you read it, Katie? You mind? Yeah, it says uh, lenders funding. Please include an offer with pre-approval letter and proof of funds. If using lender, local lender preferred, and contact information for loan officer or cell phone. Uh, sellers may require buyers to be pre-qualified by seller's lender. Bonus: thousand dollar closing cost cash and zero fees. Since this is a Keller Williams listing, your buyer qualifies to use Keller mortgage and really save. This cash could really help out a buyer in our competitive situation. Um, he put that in associated docs amongst other things. I just didn't know how to take that. Like, okay, basically we're at a disadvantage right from the get-go if we're not using Keller mortgage. Well, Notice he's being cute about that because he's putting may and could, and there's an opportunity here, but, and then in the end of the day and practical reality, he's saying, Hey, if you don't use this guy or gal, you're not getting the deal. So I, I, I think, you know, if it quacks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, it's a duck. And to me, it's sleazy mm -hmm. and, and it's, uh, it's presumptuous and it's, I, I, I think it's a RESPA violation. And, uh, and I think it's, I think it's just, just wrong. I just don't he know why. sleazy from the front door at the open house. Yeah. This, it was a complete shit show this weekend. And I was embarrassed to call myself an agent standing there with my clients. It was, you know, Aubrey was there. I don't know who else there's probably you know, 50 to 75 people waiting around his circus. And then to well, have these things. Was this the house on Patrick? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We, it was, it was horrible. I could not get any communication from him. I was trying to schedule a showing around the open house. They kept oh, changing the rules in the MLS. He kept changing the showing rules and I could not get a straight answer. Um, and when I finally did, it was from his assistant who was a complete jerk. It was, then it was when you got into the thing. house. It was terrible. He like, they tried to tell you, well, you have 10 minutes, uh, once you get in. And I, I just looked at him. I'm like, I just waited 45. I'll take as long as I want. Um, it was, you know, he had people out there waiting that weren't with agents and then they'd go to check on if they were next and then they wouldn't have them on the list. It was terrible. And I then, think too, it's, 
it's pretty interesting right now because I think that as much as we've been in a highly competitive market for the last couple of years and especially spring, I think that this year we're really seeing, um, because last year we couldn't really get in. So as, as competitive as it was last year and still seeing a lot of, of deals being made, this year we have, we can be in person a little bit more. And so we're kind of feeling the volume and effects of that. And I also feel like our market is now trying to kind of figure that out, right? So we're kind of trying to develop what our market standards are right now. And so agents and sellers even too are kind of coming up with different strategies and same with buyers, you know, buyers are coming up with different strategies to get into the house. And so we're kind of um, in that spot where we're testing out a couple of things to see how it works. And then um, ultimately that's kind of how market standards happen is, is uh, more people start doing different pieces of things or elements of it. And then, you know, pretty soon everybody's doing similar things. Kind of like our market standard for commission splits. You know, a lot of other markets are 50-50 and ours just happens to be 60-40 is just kind of how it's the chips have fallen. There's nothing necessarily in writing that says that it has to be and it can't be in writing. Um, but it is, it is interesting seeing all of these different tactics and a lot of them can feel very yucky and icky and a lot of them can be really smart, but it might just take some tweaking and adapting um, especially among kind of these, these high emotions, you know, we're, we're seeing sellers that are really trying to push their prices beyond even kind of things that are reasonable. And then we have buyers that are starting to kind of feel that push and get that frustration level. And so it's almost like they're starting to get a little bit pickier too, or kind of, um, you know, in that kind of chaotic, we've got to get something now type phase. And there's a lot of emotions involved with that. And so a lot of it is we're trying to just navigate through this market and do the best for our clients. And it is frustrating. And so it might be that there are some of these things that come up. Now, a lot of other things that come up too are maybe things that in a different market we haven't had to deal with, but does impact license law directly. So we have to be careful if we're, if we're doing some of these things outside the normal scope of what we're used to, that we maybe, you know, just, just give Tom or I a call just to kind of say, Hey, it, let me just run this by you and see what you think. And that'll kind of help some of those pieces and aspects too. Yeah. yeah. I'll just chime in real quick to kind of close the circle. I agree with everything Leslie said there. I, I, I would just close the circle on this. So um, we all know what we're dealing with here. We're not going to comment on it publicly um, in a recorded zoom session, but we all know what it is and who it is and how it is. So we'll just leave it at that. We can talk about it privately I will tell you that I think these business practices are deplorable. I think they lack any sort of integrity. I think they're exactly what's wrong with the way this market's evolving, not with what's right. I think there's an opportunity to raise the bar, not lower it. This clearly lowers it. This is clearly activity and, and behavior that is unbecoming to a real estate professional. It lessens us as an industry. It doesn't strengthen us. And it's certainly not something that I think a Better Homes and Gardens agent would engage in because I don't think any of us would allow each other to behave like that from a standpoint of being uh, a, a willing and, uh, and, and promising participant in the industry or at our company. And I'm proud that we don't behave like that. So the good news is, is that let's be proud of one another that we wouldn't do that. There'll be a forum where we can address this in a more formal way. And believe you me, we will but it's not probably appropriate to have a dialogue about it specifically as it relates to the person on the Zoom call. The concept and the issue is great. I'm glad we discussed it, but I think we need to leave it at that and we will live to fight another day in an appropriate venue as it relates to it. Great. Well, we'll jump into Zoom. So as everybody's getting your Zoom, um, everybody get your Zoom up and ready to go. And then um, really quick, while you guys are doing that, I'll just talk about affiliated business really just briefly because it, it does kind of segue into it. We have had um, some agents give us pushback on not wanting to sign our affiliated business. So similar to the wire fraud, wire fraud is a little bit different because we can have one from, from any company and that's not necessarily a form that's required by any stretch of the imagination. It's just something that we really like to do to protect our clients. Um, so you only need one of those, but when it comes to the affiliated business, um, the argument is, is that we do have uh, partnerships and each individual company 
has partnerships and business activities and different different um, kind of agreements amongst themselves that we do need to disclose. And so, so we, we do highly push to have those signed um, all around. If you have an agent that's giving you pushback in general and um, you know, we're asking for it, all you have to do is just put in, um, in the messages that they refuse to sign. Uh, more preferably, it would be great if you could put on the actual affiliated business at a text box that said, um, whatever, you know, buyers or sellers refuse to sign. So just kind of a little nugget there. Um, but are we ready to do Kahoot? And feel free to take yourselves off mute if you like to get um, uh, animated during our Kahoots, which we sometimes do. My favorite is when we're in person and everybody stands up and tries to get as close to the screen as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll give everyone one more minute. You just have to go to kahoot.it um, on your phone. You don't have to log in or anything. And then just put your, the, in that game pin, 900 4483. Perfect. Um, Pat or Scott just asked about um, does that go for coronavirus addendums too? So, yes, if there is uh, any paperwork that obviously is not, you know, say the purchase agreement or the listing agreement. Um, that people refuse to sign, all you need to do is add a text box and send a message that says refuse to sign. So that's, um, you know, other, even if it's, you know, even if it's, um, God, what's a big one that, that sometimes people refuse to sign? Um, it's agency. Yes. Sometimes they won't sign agency. Yes, there we go. So agency really. Um, seller's disclosure, you need. There's nothing. Well, actually, I wonder, Tom, if um, a buyer refused to sign a seller's disclosure. But for uh, the most part, if a, if a buyer refused to find a seller, uh, a seller's property condition disclosure statement. Yeah. Is that what the question is? Yeah. Um, that's a problem because theoretically, it, it. I don't know that it would. I wouldn't say I'm playing lawyer and I'm not a lawyer. I don't think it would void the purchase agreement. So I don't think this, the buyer could say, hey, this voids the purchase agreement because I didn't sign the seller property condition disclosure statement. I don't think that is true. However, Nebraska statute says that it has to be executed by the parties. I think if you can prove that it was provided to the purchaser and they would have had actual knowledge of a receipt through their agent, not real estate agent, but agency, meaning their, their party that would be representing their interests or would be accepting documents on their behalf, you would have a very difficult time as a buyer's agent suggesting that that would somehow void uh, the purchase agreement. And if you could prove and document that the, that, the per, that the seller property condition disclosure statement was presented and was provided to the uh, buyer's agent. And if the buyer's agent, for example, didn't pass that on and didn't get it executed, that would be a problem for the buyer's agent in that instance. If the buyer's agent can demonstrate that they've provided it to the buyer, then um, ultimately, I think that that level of responsibility as it relates to the items that the the seller property condition disclosure statement and the fact that it was disclosed, assuming that all the items were factual on the property condition disclosure statement, I think that litmus test would be met. That said, probably not a good idea to not get those things signed. I would push really hard to have it signed. Perfect. And then one other kind of quick thing on that too is that as these for sale by owners start trying to sell their homes, they do have to have seller's property disclosure and if the property is, you know, before 1978, they have to have lead based paint. So that's not an us thing, that's a state law. So um, if any FISBO tells you otherwise, um, they can talk to the real estate commission, I guess, but they do have to have those um, when submit, or, you know, at least at some point during the offer process. All right, are we ready to, ready to Kahoot? So, uh, do you want, do you yeah, want to I'm not sure what happened because we had 41 players. Yeah, a lot of people are okay. Now they're coming back okay, on. Now they're coming okay. back. I don't know if people need I, to like refresh or something because we were up to a lot. And then, so you might just have to refresh. Minute. Okay, we're right, let's give it a few minutes for people to okay. kind of let's give them 
a, a minute or two to, for everybody. I don't know what happened either, but I noticed yeah. those numbers going down. Yeah, they just started dropping. So yeah. Okay. Now we're up to 43. Now we're going the right direction. Maybe okay. somebody put in the chat if they're having difficulty signing into that. Or you can just unmute. Yeah. If you're okay, so, so Paul Hansen just said if you something so about if you, if you sign out, out of the app, it takes your yeah, name off. Okay. Correct. All right. So the winner today is going to get this awesome um, Better Homes and Gardens tumbler that you can't get anywhere else because there's only one of them right now. Um, and a Starbucks gift card. Okay. And in honor of Tom's birthday, this is Tom trivia. Oh my so, God. Yes. I know, Tom, you shouldn't have. Yeah, I knew you wanted no. to encourage everyone to join. Actually, my stomach, so, my stomach kind of hurt. Now it really hurts. But. Are we ready? Actually, Audrey, can I read the questions? Because I might have stories to add to some of these. Yes, Leslie, you can uh, run it. Just tell, <laughs> I'll hit start and you tell me, or you can talk. <laughs> Here we go. All Are right. Can you guys hear it? Yes. Huh. Okay. We can hear, or I can hear. The music, I mean. Oh, no music. No, I can't hear the music. No music. No music. All right, where was Tom born? Scottsdale, Arizona, Omaha, Nebraska, Los Gatos, California, or Diet Coke? <laughs> California. Painful. <laughs> Painful. <laughs> Don't worry, Tom. There's only 10. And it is Los Gatos, California. That was a good one. I didn't think anybody was going to get that. Oh, nobody gets Diet Coke. Huh. I'm surprised. <laughs> okay. Ready. Here we go. All right. Whoever. All right. Yeah. Whoever's SG posted the thing. All right. How did Tom and Leslie start working together? Headhunter, Craigslist, through a colleague, or a classified ad? Classified ad. Which this is a pretty funny story that I, I do like to tell people as often as humanly possible. And if you guys don't know me very well or have not hung around me for more than five minutes, you guys know that I'm a sucker for a really good story. So uh, yeah, Tom and I met through a Craigslist um, ad for, for a job. So it was none other than just dumb luck that we ran into each other at the right, right time and right place, apparently on Craigslist. <laughs> okay. After we get done with this Kahoot, we, we might reevaluate this relationship, but for now it's, it's okay. <laughs> okay. All right, who's SG before yeah. we start? Sheila Gates, I bet. Yeah. All right. Okay, here we go. That heat comes in hot too. What was the first piece of office, office furniture or equipment that we had? Tom's desk, a green couch, a used conference room table, or a used fax machine copier? A used fax machine. And fun fact about fax machines, if you ever need to send a fax, like that one time a year that you have to fax in something, um, you can fax through dot loop. So there's on those little three sides or little three buttons on the on the side, you can actually fax a document through dot loop. Any That's incoming, outgoing, fax, not incoming, right? Anything. No, incoming. not incoming. Yeah, any incoming faxes. Um, we do have a number that goes to, to my email. All right, our first piece of office equipment actually was um, a used conference room table that we lost the screws to. So you couldn't even lean on it because otherwise the top <laughs> would kind of pop up. Do we still have that? I don't think so. I don't think it made the move from, we had it pretty much until we moved into the new office. That We got that, our 50 bucks out of that table. That's for sure. That the one that was at the, the first Underwood office? Yep. It, <laughs> and it had four chairs with it too. So yep. we were high rolling. That was bad. Uh, <laughs> well, Eden's moving up. I, I can't go through Tom's birthday without giving him a little bit of grief. It was bad. Just wait go. until your favorite one comes up. I bring this up every single time your birthday comes around. All right, what vegetable does Tom hate? Mushrooms, broccoli, tomatoes, or green peppers? Sorry. 
This is the first one. I don't know the answer. I don't either. Oh, yeah. Somebody might argue that it's not a vegetable. <laughs> it is tomatoes. Yeah, it's tomatoes. Wow. That one was a pretty across the board. Tom, that just says you need to take more people to lunch. I know. <laughs> cheap, right? Okay, here we go. Eden has apparently been to lunch with you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've ordered in lunch before. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there you go. What celebrity does Tom share a birthday with? Lady Gaga, Tom Hanks, Brad Pitt, Luther Vandross. I don't even know if I know the answer to this. Yeah. Tom, what's your guess? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know this one either. Wow. Am I saying that right? Who is that? Luther Luther Vandross. Vandross. Who is that? Vandross. Oh, there you... He's a performer. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, let's see who. Uh oh, Eden. Go in. All right, Tom used to memorize phone numbers instead of programming them into his phone. True or false? True. Anything about the phone would be like that. Yes. It was art to watch Tom oh, look at his phone and, and immediately be able to say, And I just what? submitted an offer oh, at 16714. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It highly, highly impressive. <laughs> okay. Mm, geez. Oh, we can't. So in our little circle, we have to um, we have to put Eden at a disadvantage anytime we do anything competitive because she usually beats all of our tails yeah. when it comes to <laughs> trivia and games. Okay, here we go. not competitive at all, right, Eden? Or what hand does Tom write with? Left, right, ambidextrous, or chicken scratch? <laughs> all of the above. Yeah. Carol should get that one. <laughs> Boom, Tom is left-handed. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. Where did Tom get his master's degree? Creighton, UNO, UNL, or UCLA? So Tom, on a, on a scale of one to 10, how painful is this? It's getting better. It's kind of like a shot. All started. right, there you go. You just kind of got to rip the band-aid off and realize that it is what it is, and and that's what we got. <laughs> Tom actually got his master's degree at UNO. Hmm. Your bachelor is at Creighton, though, correct? Correct. Yeah. Oh, Eden's on fire. Oh boy. Somebody's gonna have to take her mouse away from her. <laughs> oh, this one. You can choose more than one answer. Which bars and restaurants has Tom owned or partnered with on? Brazen Head, Jay Coco, the Blue Jay Bar, or Daughters Canyon? And or all, whichever ones. I always forget, I get confused on the multi-select. But I think they're all worth points too. So Eden, this might be where. Eden knows everything about Tom. <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> That's why she gets a bonus Pretty every much. Year. It was all of the above. <laughs> wow. Okay. What's Tom's favorite sports team? Nebraska Cornhuskers, Diet Coke, Kansas City Chiefs, or Creighton Blue Jays? Oh, and Tom, wasn't there a time um, when you'd be on listing appointments where another agent would say, Ah, oh, Tom Simmons, you want to work with a restaurant guy? Why would you do that? Yeah, there's a there's a sales guy that's still around, not here, not with our company, that used to say it all the time. <laughs> not so, around. So much for the how that worked out, the restaurant guy. You want to start a restaurant with a real estate brokerage guy? How many siblings does Tom have? Two, three, zero, or one? I know where'd this picture come from? Uh, I found I'm it somewhere. Pretty sure that's photoshopped. No, no. 
<laughs> I have the actual photo. Okay, it just got a little worse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. Tom has one sister. Yep, sorry. Tom has one sister. Um, okay, and I believe this is the, na the last question. All right, my favorite one. What happened to the cake in this photo? Tom dropped it. Someone tried to throw it at Tom. Tom tried to throw it at someone or it fell. <laughs> I, I, I think I bust this photo out every single year on your birthday. I just can't <laughs> So this was actually somebody else's cake that Tom was pretending to throw at someone that actually <laughs> slipped off and fell right on the table. <laughs> yeah okay let's see who won happy birthday tom here we go oh we got justine and, and sheila oh uh, eden which one which two <laughs> did you miss <laughs> um right. droppers canyon and luther vandross uh, all right. I, I questioned the word celebrity on that one. So so <laughs> let's so let's do three for all the people because they're or, you know have reason to be around the office all the time. So we'll give all three of those guys gift cards. Do we know who is fourth or does it not go down? Uh, it did say, and I can check. Um, I think it was Anne and Jen, but all I can look. All right, well, let's give all five of those. They, they had to endure this. Let's give all five the Starbucks <laughs> gift cards and we can order more of the whatever. Because anybody who had to go Excuse through this, me. we should probably give everybody who played. Do you have um, oh, the folders that I can like just. All right, so that's all we have unless someone uh, wants to share a fun Tom story. <laughs> thanks a lot guys this was fun yeah. it's very nice thanks so much